Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. My name is Gwen Becerra and I'm the Vice President of Member Experience in the AAAE Foundation for the American Association of Airport Executives. Thank you for joining us for today's informative free webinar for AAAE members on this important topic. At the height of the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, AAAE partnered with the Global Bio-Risk Advisory Council, GBAC, a division of ISSA, to encourage, encourage members to achieve the GBAC STAR facility accreditation, which is the cleaning industry's best solution for outbreak prevention, response, recovery, and resiliency. A total of 77 airports and authorities achieved the GBAC STAR accreditation, and more than half of those maintain their accreditation today through the program's renewal process. While it might feel like we are on the other side of the COVID-19 pandemic, in some ways, AAAE continues our partnership with GBAC today. Not only are GBAC STAR accredited facilities equipped and ready for what's next, they're also able to adapt quickly and withstand changes. Which brings us to today's webinar, GBAC Airport Accreditation, Elevating Airport Safety and State Sustainability. We are fortunate to be joined by experts from the GBAC team, as well as representatives from three of the country's largest airports to discuss why accreditation matters, its role in current infectious disease trends, and its impact on airport sustainability and financial success. I'd like to introduce Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, Senior Director at GBAC. Dr. Gavin is a certified forensic operator and certified bioforensic restoration specialist with more than 25 years of technical experience in responding to infectious disease outbreaks and emergency management. And he has worked with the U.S. and international governments, the United Nations agencies, and the private sector in the U.S., Africa, Asia, Middle East, and the Latin America. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Gavin, who will introduce the rest of today's panelists and moderate our discussion. And as a reminder, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box on your screen at any time, and we will get to them at the end of the session. Take it away, Dr. Gavin. Thanks, Gwen. Um, it's so important that we really emphasize the partnership between um, Global Bio-Risk Advisory Council, GBAC, and the American Association of Airport Executives and how important airports are as part of our U.S. critical inf infrastructure, as part of our national security, and they need to be protected. And in the way that we've worked together um, to help airports throughout the country, both small and large. So I'd like to start the webinar with just introducing who's on the webinar today. Um, I'll start with um, Celeste first. Celeste, if you can just say who you are and where you're from, uh, that'd be great. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Celeste Hamner. I'm the Managing Director for Terminal Operations at Harry Reid International Airport. Thanks, Celeste. Thanks, Celeste. Over to you, Steve. Can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Earhart. I am the Senior Director of Operations for GBAC. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Scott, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Scott Scrampstead. I'm the Director of Terminal and Landside Operations for the Metropolitan Airports Commission. Thanks, Scott. Uh, Rula, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, sure. Um, hello, everybody. I am uh, Rula Abdel Masih. I'm Director of Product Development at ISSA. Thanks, Rula. And Omar, can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, good afternoon, everybody. I am the Airport Maintenance Superintendent overseeing custodial facilities at uh, uh, Los Angeles World Airport at LAX. Thanks, Omar. So you can see that we've evened up the team today. We've got three from GBAC and three sig very significant, important airports uh, in the country represented. And I just wanted to start today's webinar with really something that I've learnt having worked with airports now, gosh, for nearly over three years in our partnership with the American Association of Airport Executives, AAAE. One of the things that I've learnt through the GBAC STAR program was despite airports spending hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars on cleaning budgets, there wasn't a lot of detail, a lot of information. Um, in the contracts, but even from the airports themselves. And we understand that the, the commercial cleaning um, service providers, the, cl the commercial cleaning companies operate in a highly competitive but very unregulated industry with zero entry barriers. And that's really important because our GBAC Star program was has helped airports set standards for how cleaning performance could be specified more importantly, how it could be measured. 
in order to raise the quality, but to, to provide data and information in a way that airports could tell their story and explain what they're actually paying for. And our GBAC team in the last three years has helped many airports by reviewing their current cleaning contracts and their budgets and asking, where are the details? And what are you actually paying for? So I think for the, as Gwen outlined, with the 77 airports that we've been working with, our GBAC staff program has focused on health, safety, security, but more importantly, focused on the systems of how surfaces are cleaned, what influences and, and uh, indoor air quality, and to look at everyone that uses that building, the airport, uh, throughout the year. And we know that airports are so significant under the US Critical Infrastructure Protection Program in that they're significant with the, now, the number of employees they have, but more importantly, the number of passengers, visitors they have throughout the year. So I just wanted to start off with saying that's one thing that I've learned um, over the three years that the GBAC Star program has been running is that the, the need to be data driven and the need for more detail because airports do a lot of cleaning. So I wanted to, st to start with um, uh, Scott uh, from Minneapolis St. Paul Airport. Scott, what's What's, what, what's, what's some of the, some of the things that GBAC Star has maybe helped your airport? Yeah, well, thanks, Gavin, and thanks everybody for the time here today. Um, you know, you touched on a couple of things that I think that helped really set up the framework for this conversation. Really, why MSP was initially drawn to the program. Uh, you know, you talked about the number of employees and the number of passengers. Here at MSP, we have about twenty thousand employees, and uh, going into twenty twenty, we just got out of a record year. Uh, we had 39 million passengers in 2019 and all indications were that 2020 we were going to surpass all of our previous records as we were tracking about five to seven percent increase per year and we all know what happened starting at about mid-march and then come april our traffic was down about 95 percent from previous months from previous years basically we're at a standstill and what was initially appealing about the program is whether it was uh, our leadership, our um, folks that manage our facilities, our janitorial partners, our airline stakeholders, none of us have ever dealt with this before. Uh, you know, you mentioned that airports do a lot of cleaning. Here at MSP, our cleaning contract is actually the largest cleaning contract in the entire state. So we definitely do a lot of cleaning but we've never cleaned during a pandemic. So through our affiliation with AAAE is really how we found out about the program. And instead of, um, we, we really wanted to try to distill what was facts and science versus what was myths about the pandemic and this, um, you know, some of the fears that people had. And uh, when we look to a, a group like the Global Biorisk Advisory Council, you know, it's a world-renowned group uh, with the expertise that we were really seeking for us to help build out our program. And it wasn't just cleaning. And that's the, the piece that was really appealing. It was everything from cleaning to uh, air circulation and ventilation, procedures and protocols for social distancing, um, training for janitorial staff, for our facilities management staff. And then almost as equally important, it, the STAR facility accreditation really gave MSP that seal of approval, if you will, from a world-renowned, respected organization that said, hey, this facility not only does good cleaning, they prioritize the health and safety of all of their passengers and all of their employees that use their facilities. You know, so it was, it was really, the need and the desire for us to try to reassure the public that it's safe to use our terminal facilities and it's safe to come back and start flying again. And, and GBAC helped us do that. And, and Scott, what were some of those numbers again? How many passengers a year do you have? 39 million passengers in 2019. And um, we're still not quite there yet, uh, but last year we're at about 35 million. So we still have some post pandemic effects, but uh, we're, we're still busy. Yep. That's phenomenal, isn't it? 
No, thanks, Scott. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask Celeste the same question. Um, you know, Celeste, how has GBAC Star helped uh, Las Vegas um, Airport? Um, so, hey, good morning, everybody, and, and thank you, Dr. G. Um, so we're in a little bit of a different situation from some of the things that Scott touched on at MSP. Um, we don't contract out our custodial here. We're um, one of the few airports in the nation. We actually employ all of our own cleaning staff. Um, we do have some supplemental contracts that, that touch on other pieces of that, but truly, um, GBAC was a, we have long been aligned with and, and members of ISSA, um, and also of AAAE. So, um, the ISSA component is because obviously we, um, we employ our own cleaning staff. So, um, it was just a natural alignment, um, when, when the pandemic hit, um, we had obviously a lot of, you know, we, we already had the equipment, we have a lot of the processes, we had a lot of the procedures already in place. But I think the importance of GBAC was having a third party come in and assess really what we do on a daily basis. Um, were we meeting the, the standards, um, you know, the health and safety standards that, that GBAC had established through ISSA and through AAAE. Um, and, you know, were we really doing our due diligence and, and providing a clean facility? We thought we were, um, but without somebody from the outside really looking and validating what we're doing, um, I think that was a huge piece of what GBAC provided to us is to say, hey, these are areas where you're really doing well. Um, these are some areas where you could improve. And the beauty of going through the GBAC accreditation process for us was it really forced us to evaluate all aspects of our cleaning, uh, our risk mitigation, our air quality, you know, the, how we use chemicals, what chemicals we use, all of those things, um, you know, GBAC, sure, we take a look, absolutely. But the beauty of GBAC is now we look at it every single year and we look at our, where can we improve? How can we do better? Um, you know, you force us as part of the GBAC accreditation to reassess every single year um, what we're doing, how we're doing it and how we can do it better. And I, I think that that's a really important piece of what GBAC provides, um, whether you use contract cleaning, whether you use your own people, whatever, um, you know, it's, it's that validation and it's that um, assessment of what you do. Um, you know, obviously our, our goal is to keep people safe um, and to provide a, a safe and clean environment and to get people where they want to go. Um, we recovered the fastest um, of any airport in the nation uh, post pandemic. Um, you know, we were at 51 million in 2019. We're now at 57 million um, for this past year. Um, <clears throat> when the floodgates of the post-pandemic travel opened initially, I think people obviously were hesitant, but you know, we plastered G back everywhere. Um, we really made a, a huge effort on our part to educate the public as to what G back was and why it was valuable to have that seal of approval and you know, to reassure people, as Scott mentioned, that it was safe to travel and that it was safe to come to the airport and that we were doing our due diligence to really make the facility as safe, um, you know, not not just security wise, but as safe, um, you know, um, from germs, dirt, you know, all of the things that people were concerned about when, when they initially started flying again. And that was really, um, you know, you guys have been a great partner to us in, in helping us really assess our processes and make sure that we're doing the right thing. Yeah, so, yes, so yes. when I come to Harry Reid International Airport in Las Vegas, where do you take me? Where do you and I go to? We go down the basement. What's oh. so <laughs> so um, one of the things, because we have our own training, uh, because we have our own staff, we have a, a training academy for all of our own folks um, that we have established that is Truly, um, I think it's pretty state of the art. Um, we have every kind of uh, of touch point is represented in our training academy. Every uh, every airport custodial um, staff member that we has 
have goes through the training academy. They have to graduate. Um, and so they have the opportunity to clean um, and to learn our way to clean um, within a controlled environment. Um, you know, we have ticket counters. We have every kind of floor that we have represented in the airport, um, every kind of wall space, um, mock bathrooms. It's all there. Um, so before we sort of unleash them out into the real world, the, you know, we have a way to make sure that they're adhering to our standards, that they understand the training piece, um, that they are doing um, cl the clean the way that the, to the standard that we've established in the way that we want them to clean. So it's helpful um, for us. Um, that's a key component in making sure that our staff um, is doing what we want them to do to the level that we want them to do it. So it's um, it's it it was an investment and it was an endeavor, but it's an investment in our staff and in our in an our cleaning belief. And I think that it has been a tremendous success for us. Um, and I hope that it continues to be a tremendous success moving forward. Um, we're, we're seeing that that is very helpful to our new staff that we're bringing in. Well, so well you, you're my Disneyland. <laughs> I know you love it. <laughs> and, and, I, and I think this is just a really important point to make to everyone. What Celeste and the team have done in Las Vegas should be a model for everyone else. Um, when we started this journey um, with AAAE through our GBAC Star program, one of the first things that we learned was over 90% of the airports we engaged with hadn't been doing any training. And that assumption was cleaning was really subjective. It was really easy. You just what you do. But you're spending millions of dollars. And you've bought real value there by looking at the signs, looking at the evidence, but also ensuring that people are empowered to get feedback, Celeste, on doing a good job, doing a job that works, and I think that's so important. And I, I you know, you, uh, you know how excited I get when we come to you, you come to your, your training facility. But I really do think that we'll talk more about this in this webinar. That how fundamental that is to take where cleaning is today to to make it be recognised as a trade, um, and there's proper value, there's appropriate value there, because um, I know how much all the airports in our program are spending every year. So thanks, Celeste. I'm going to switch gears and head over to Omar now, uh, Los Angeles World Airports. And really important, Omar, I'm going to tell you one thing. On the doors of LAX, you have a decal that has GBAC Star. We're also with co-branded with Airport Council International. I can't tell you how many photos I have. Every time I go through your airport, I get a photo because I'm so proud of what you guys have accomplished at LAX. T tell us a bit more about what, what GBAC Star did for you. Yeah, that is a, a, a proud thing that we have at, our, at every single one of our doors, um, where every 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 guest that comes through our facility can see that we have been certified, and it does give them that comfort uh, and a reassurance that uh, that our airport is is a safe location for them to be and to travel from. Um, as busy as LAX is, you know, going from you know uh, the other airports the same, you know, going from. Uh, record 84 million passengers in 80 uh, in, in uh, 2019 to nearly losing 95 percent of that was a great blow and now um, our guests that come through our doors they see that that uh, that em your emblem and uh, and and the, the, the certifications for ISSA as well as the QR code that's included where they can scan and it takes them to uh, our website where it gives them all of the uh, information that they need as far as our cleaning procedures and safety and security, um, uh, where they can go to get uh, additional information, um, testing, um, where, where the testing is or, or was uh, here on site uh, uh, through the pandemic. So it is um, uh, one great factor that, that, that has affected our our, our guests uh, uh, confidence to, to, to use our facilities again. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, the uh, what did I have here? Um, going through the GBAC program and the ISSA, uh, it, it, it taught us that we were just, that we were cleaning um, with our custodial staff, not really knowing um, uh, the importance of the of, of cleaning it, it was just it was just a a uh, a 
a, a, a given that they had to clean the facility, but not the reason why. So once we got certif the certification and knew the, 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 the reason why, you know, the, the hygiene was so important and, 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 and measuring uh, how clean was clean, uh, it really opened their eyes and, uh, and, and saw the importance of their job. And, and we got a lot of their buy-in, which helped us a lot uh, to, to get our, our, our doors uh, reopened to, uh, to the public. So. And I think what was unique, too, about the GBAC star relationship with uh, Los Angeles World Airports, Omar, was the fact before we could even do business with the airport, we actually had to be you know, a, an approved vendor. And we had to go through the process of that approval um, at, the, at the county level, the L.A. county level. Uh, that's unique. You know, it, was, it wasn't something we had to do for the, the other 70, for not all of the, the 76 other airports there. We were at 77 in the, in the program. But we actually had to go through this procurement process, which uh -huh. we, we managed successfully. And then we sat down and said, right, well, LA, you know, LAX is a huge airport. Um, you know, how many people would you have going through your airport every year? Uh, at, at, in, in 2019, like I said, we had over 82 million passengers coming through. Um, so far, we, we've broken some records, uh, traveling, uh, traveling days where we've had upwards of 130,000 uh, uh, per day. Um, uh, so we are looking at possibly reaching those numbers once again. We're not at 100% just yet, but we are a very busy airport once again. Um, uh, so, you know, thanks, thanks to the uh, GPEC accreditation. No, thanks, Omar. That's great. So I'm going to talk to, to Steve from um, the GBAC team. Steve's the uh, Senior Director of Operations. And, and Steve, for the last, gosh, three years, you've been leading a team to review the documentation that we received through the GBAC Star program. I know some of the reviews I've done of the airports. I think my largest for one airport, international airport, was 900 pages of <laughs> documentation that we received. And to tell everyone, we actually read every page of the 900 pages. What's some of the things that we've learned, Stephen? We've seen you know, over the changed over the last three years. So I think it starts with a few of the things that have been touched on already. To me, and I, and I don't think anyone needs to take a, a course in leadership to understand this, but buy-in from the top levels. So part of the, the elements of this program is alignment of, of all of these different groups that that may have a direct or an indirect tie into the housekeeping program, right? And it starts at the top. It starts at this C-suite level. Uh, and that's the level of commitment that we need uh, to move forward with the accreditation. But then you get the diversity of these other groups within engineering, within marketing, within HR operations, um, and, and getting everybody together in a line and all moving in the same direction relative to exactly what Omar said with cleaning for a purpose. Why are we doing this? And that level of understanding kind of created this momentum to where there's structure, right? There's understanding. You, Gavin, talked about the contracts, the cleaning contracts. An overwhelming majority was the, the lack of detail that was in these contracts. And, and that was inversely proportional to the amount of money that people were that these airports are paying um, for these cleaning contractors to come in and, and do the work. Uh, so with that, we've, we've really helped define how to measure that, how to measure that purpose um, and be able to, to guide and counsel um, with the contracts. And same thing with understanding risk assessments, understanding inventory management and resource management, all the things that, that, that really encompass what should be in a contract. Um, measuring effectiveness, we've definitely talked about that and, and really using data to help drive decisions and all of these things really leading down a path of preparedness, response plans, operational efficiency, and, and guest confidence, right? It's that that public perception of coming in and being able to really communicate that purpose, um, I think has been really impactful. Yeah, so Steve, the initial GBAC star accreditation process does require some documentation to be completed. The renewal process 12 months later is a much easier process. Just outline what, what how the, the, those two processes are different. So, I mean, really as, as the, the pandemic evolved, 
and kind of the public consciousness around infection control has evolved. So kind of has this program. Um, for some of the airports that have gone through this and been been with us since the beginning, understand the amount of paperwork that maybe it took in the in the beginning. As you mentioned, Gavin, some of these submissions were were pretty hefty. So we've really worked really hard to to streamline, maintain the integrity of all of the elements that go into this, but really streamline it in, in a format that you can you can digest a little bit easier and organize your information a little bit easier. Um, one of the key elements to this is documentation management and, and really understanding one, not, not just how to fill out paperwork, but to make it useful, make it impactful and make sure that that's communicated well across all in our, you know, all the parties that are involved. Um, so this, in, the initial process is much more streamlined um, than it was at the very beginning of this, as, as we were trying to help as many as we could. The renewal process really gets into, um, Changes, you know, it's an annual process, and as Celeste mentioned, it really forces a, a an evaluation each year, which which is inherently baked into the accreditation, with its foundation being in continuous improvement. Risk management, continuous improvement, is really the base for this for this entire program, and, and why it is this annual and perpetual thing, because it it that's the level of attention it requires. Um, I don't think. Anybody on this webinar can can sit here and say we have an extremely stable labor workforce in our housekeeping departments. It's it's a very very fluid workforce, and so this this need for accountability and training and documentation is is as important as ever. Um, and so that's that's really how we've evolved this program, just from the administrative side of things, um, along with with adding a few new key pieces year after year, really uh, more of a continuous improvement that gets into um, other things that ISSA does, workloading specialties, um, op more operational efficiencies that aren't necessarily so tied to infection prevention, but we're bringing that into the accreditation. Um, sustainability recognition, right? that is that is something that's on everybody's plate, is, is how do we become more sustainable um, in really get that recognition for it. That, that's that's part of it. Um, we have recognition from LEED um, for their green cleaning policy. If you go through this accreditation um, and fill out the addendum for, for LEED, you you meet certain criteria for, for LEED and kind of bypass the requirements that are needed for those. Um, indoor air quality is this constantly evolving space that that just needs more information out into uh, into the world. And so we've partnered with asthma and allergy standards to develop a, a training course on indoor air quality that is included with the accreditation as well. So um, lots of evolution, lots of change, but the, the core remains the same as we try to uh, make everything more efficient uh, for the customer. Yeah, I think that's really important, Steve. So the actual on-site visits that the GBAC team, including myself, have made I'm still very surprised that people in the room, I went to one airport recently, 35 people in the room, we had operations people, risk management, uh, engineers, uh, procurement, customer service, uh, marketing, all there um, in the room. So just wanted to throw this back out to the airports. As we consider 2024, and you've, you've, you've again, the numbers you talked about, the passengers, the employees are really, you know, these are big numbers. Our GBAC Star program, you know, looks at quality insurance to ensure the processes of what you do actually work, um, provide provide a return on investment, but they're they're effective. You know, are you cleaning for a purpose? Quality management, are we ensuring that through our annual uh, reaccreditation process, we're helping you with continuous improvement? It's just not a it's not a pass or a fail. It's not a tick in the box. Are we actually helping with with you, helping your airport with continuous improvement and taking that systems approach? And I was seeing that by the personal on-site meetings that I had, that systems approach. So I'm going to throw this question over to Scott. Scott, in 2024, cleaning to a standard, cleaning for a purpose, where does it sit today in your organization? What discussions do you have with both the high levels as well as the at the at, on the front line of the operations level. Yeah, well, interesting you asked me that question because cleaning is a very high focus right now because we just transitioned to a new vendor at our airport. 
So uh, we made that transition on January 1st and we're still a couple months into it. But really the foundation that GBAC helped us build uh, through the accreditation process and the continuous improvement, that foundation really, um, it really helped us get the cleaning contractor, the new, the new contractor up to speed and where they need to be. Um, it was very helpful to review with some of the work that they've done at the their other airports as well that that have been accredited through GBAC and what some of our expectations and priorities are. But yeah, cleaning is always is always an important topic. And, and in fact, um, you know, the, the three things that our customers tell us that are most important to them when they're in our terminals are wait times, wayfinding and cleanliness. And so it, it's an extreme focus. It has to be done right. And if it's not, people are going to see it. And, you know, the, the thing that really pushed our program above and beyond when we partnered with GBAC was doing those things that we may have not thought about before. You know, we introduced um, electrostatic disinfection during the pandemic. Um, we introduced a touch point cleaning program, which is something that we've carried, carried on through, through uh, um, past the pandemic and into our, our new vendor. Uh, but, you know, is looking at those processes of what we had historically done, what we are doing and what we should be doing. So going back to that continuous improvement. But, yeah, cleaning continues to be a, a extremely high focus at all all of the, our airports. And, and that's important. So when you talk on a new vendor, and we heard Celeste talk about how um, at uh, Harry Reid in Las Vegas, it's all in-house and they had this wonderful training facility. Would a training facility like that help you in um, at Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport? Yeah, boy, I'd love the opportunity to next time in Vegas to see that. I, I certainly think we could uh, it could take advantage of something like that. Um, but yeah, and and you know, training is vitally important, no matter if you do it yourself or if it's with a new vendor or an existing vendor. Um, one of the things that I found beneficial was, you know, being able to review our vendors' training programs and identify if there's any gaps and if they needed any areas for improvement and then being able to partner with GBAC and all the work that we did to close those gaps and to get the program to where we want it to be. You know, at the end of the day, the, the cleaning program here at MSP, it ended up being a, a cornerstone or a foundation of a program that we've carried on past the pandemic. We call it Travel Confidently MSP. And I had a little graphic of it on my slide here, but it really started out as an objective that started with the pandemic and trying to restore confidence in the traveling public that it was safe to come back to our facilities because we've developed all these enhanced protocols and cleaning procedures. That document and that program has lived on through um, you know, the continued reaccreditation. Um, you know, the other thing we do is um, initially when we got accredited and now when we get reaccredited, we market the heck out of it. We do press releases, we put it up on our digital media, uh, we did uh, presentations to our board. So it's really important to us to be able to get the message out there that, hey, have, we haven't forgot about health and safety and we haven't forgot about potential risks, uh, biohazard risks. Uh, we're gonna continue making sure that our facility is the safest it can be, is the cleanest it's, it can be, and that we are continuously improving whenever we can. Really interesting you say that, Scott, of how relevant the program is today. I was just on a flight yesterday coming back and uh, um, a person on the flight was coughing quite a lot. It was a, you know, this is about a five-hour flight. And so I went to the bag and I put a mask on and suddenly all the people around on the flight go, have you got any spare ones for me? And you, this unfortunately, I don't know what this person had. They coughed nearly the whole five hours of the flight. Um, so, again, we're seeing certain things that have really sort of stayed part of our culture they're sustainable. Uh, but again, more importantly, being able to explain our cleaning story um, so the public and, and, and the employees understand that what we're doing is the best that we can do and we're, we're using industry best standards to do that. Yeah, I think you really hit the nail on the head there with that message. It's, it's telling the story. Uh, you know, People know that they have cleaners there, but what are they doing? Are they hitting those touch points? What about the tables we sit at and eat at? the chairs we're sitting at, um, all the things we touch in a facility, you know, where are our hand sanitizer locations? I, always, I just think it's interesting looking back at the pandemic, 
Um, prior to that pandemic, we probably had three hand sanitizer dispensers located throughout the terminals, and now we have 250. And then that's the real important point there, Scott, that, again, you know, being a, a, an epidemiologist that I, you know, when I trained at CDC at the Center for Disease Control, we know that 80% of infections can be stopped, prevented, just through better hand washing. And so hand sanitizer, that, that, that's a really impressive number that you've done that. I know that a lot of airports had put out a lot of hand sanitizer and were struggling keeping them full or keeping them operational. And how, how have you met that challenge? Well, yeah, at, our challenge was actually finding the solution for it. And just the supply chain issues and to try to find a vendor that could supply the amount of solution we needed. Um, we actually got creative and we were able to obtain some solution in 55 gallon barrels um, from FEMA that got us through that initial phase there. And then once supply chains open, opened up again, we were able to maintain that. But the interesting thing is that it's expected now at airports. It's expected that you know your water temperature in your, your washrooms is the right temperature, that you have soap, that you have hand sanitizers, um, even uh, disinfecting wipes or availability for things like that. So just even the mindset of the traveler has changed. And again, going back to being able to tell that story of what our cleaners are doing and how they're keeping everybody safe, that's just critically important to all of us. No, no, thanks, Scott. I'm going to take the, the, the same question to you, Celeste, over at uh, you know with Harry Reid International Las Vegas Airport. In 2024, what's become yep. sustainable? What's this, what? What is the message that GBAC Star is helping you with right now? Um, you know, we are experiencing our busiest year ever. We had two really major events um, for the first time in. Uh, Las Vegas, we had Formula One, our first Formula One race, and then we also just had Super Bowl. Um, so that's, you know, hundreds of thousands of people going through um, our terminal both ways, um, arriving and departing. And, you know, you just, you really want to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and that you're doing all the right things. Um, so really what GBAC has meant to us in 2024 is, you um, making sure that you're establishing those standards, making sure that you're maintaining those standards and living up to them. But, you know, we have, we've struggled as everyone has through the labor market. Um, you know, again, to, to your reference about telling the story of clean, um, you know, our staff really understands the importance of what they do and how important they are in the big picture of what we do. Um, we get a lot of feedback from, our airline partners from our tenants and vendors, particularly like in the food court areas and things like that about floor cleanliness, about the table cleanliness. Um, some of that falls under us, some of it doesn't, but it doesn't mean that the customer doesn't see that. So, you know, it's really been a collaborative effort amongst um, not just the Department of Aviation, but also through our tenant and vendor partners to ensure that we are maintaining those standards. We uh, we have a quality assurance program that we just um, really revamped and launched that we're putting a lot of attention to. GBAC naturally aligns with that um, because that, uh, you know, there is the piece of it that really you're looking at your what you're doing airport wide, not just um, division wide or department wide and in not just in a just in a cleaning perspective, but truly are you is your facility um meeting all the standards in terms of sustainability and in, ter in terms of air quality all of those things um you know that i really think that those are important pieces you have to look beyond just the 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 one piece of you know is somebody out there mopping the floor is is somebody um you know um uh, electrostatic fogging in your bathrooms yes we do all of that and that's important um but there's other bigger pieces of it that impact large crowds of people who are moving through your facility that that make that important as well. Um, and you have to make sure that you're addressing those overall concerns in, in alignment with the clean piece as well. And I think what mm -hmm. I learned too, and it's so important, your role, Celeste, as Managing Director of Terminal Operations, mm -hmm. I think I got that right, um, that you've got a building, it's called an airport, but you don't have full control over everything, the concessionaries, other areas, TSA, for example. 
Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things is we really build um, on our partnerships here with um, all of the vendors and, and the we're a giant landlord is like how I like to refer to us. Um, and, you know, we partnered with the TSA. They really struggled with a lot of their um, outsourced cleaning during the pandemic. And, you know, we have hundreds of people who go through the checkpoint a day, um, thousands of people who go through the checkpoint a day. That's an important piece um you know where people really need to feel safe and and they need to see the the cleanliness piece um you know we sort of hired ourselves out to the tsa and uh we did all the electrostatic uh, electrostatic fogging of the checkpoints um we did all the detail cleaning of the checkpoints um that was something that that fell within you know really their area of 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 the world but but we all understand it's a collaborative effort and we we want people to come to Las Vegas. We want people to feel safe. So if that means that we have to work in in um, conjunction with each other to make to reach that end goal, then that's what we do. And that was one of the things that that we helped them with um, because we recognize that that's an important piece of the travel journey. It's, it's all part of the same ribbon and we have to make sure that we're taking care of the guest from start to finish. No, no, thanks, Celeste. That's really helpful. So I take it over to Omar. Again, Omar, at LAX, Los Angeles World Airports, how, where, where does GBAC go to this year in 2024 for you? For us, our, our main focus is uh, continuous training. We're uh, uh, having more and more of our, of our managers and supervisors take the uh, ISSA training um, along with the, uh, I think it's uh, the Cleaning Maintenance Institute. Um, so we're hoping with all the information that they gather, they will become the trainers for all of our custodial staff uh, with the emphasis on cleaning and hygiene and uh, our, and, and making sure that, that our staff understands that they are the frontline defense in our facilities. Um, we have, we've invested uh, uh, in the ATP testing equipment as well. Um, we've developed uh, standard operating procedures for future infectious diseases and epidemics uh, or pandemics. Um, We've also developed all the signage for our public, like I said, you know, show, showing them that, they, that, that these buildings are safe and we will continue to do so. Um, and that's why we're, you know, we're continuing our accreditation. Um, as, as, as you mentioned, with the, um, with the suppliers and, 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 uh, uh, and, and our vendors, we, we did change the, 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 the language in our, in, in, in our contracts to where uh, the vendors needed to be uh, better supplied or, or have um, uh, critical supplies at, at the ready at all times. So we don't fall into that shortage and wondering where our supplies are gonna come from. You know, in LA City, fortunately for us, uh, we have uh, multiple departments and we all pulled through uh, uh, to make sure that the airport was supplied with the hand sanitizers that we needed. And, um, uh, yeah, and, and, and those critical supplies. Um, as Scott mentioned, we went from maybe having 36 to 40 uh, hand sanitizers in our in, in our terminals uh, in 2019 to, to over 500. And not only that, but all of our airline partners have also uh, set up their uh, uh, hand sanitizers and so forth uh, uh, at, at their counters. So, you know, the, so 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 the the focus for the public to 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 feel uh, the safety uh, and 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 now uh, see us uh, where where in the past we had um, our custodial staff kind of stay in the background and, and not be seen. You know, uh, um, clean when when you can and uh, and don't be in the way of our guests. No, now now we're physically there and 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 our guests. I you know now the the the. Uh, they see that we're that we're actively cleaning uh, throughout the day, 24 hours, on, uh, uh, and and uh, and 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 they uh, they see that and feel the comfort. Though they'll, they'll wait until something is clean before they use the facility or a device or a fixture. You know, they'll take the time and you know and and we appreciate that because now they don't see us as 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 oh they're just a custodian. You know, uh, who's there to pick up trash? No, we're there to to actually uh, keep them safe uh, and 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 uh, and ensure that the, that that their health is 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 of highest importance to us. No, Omar, I think it's really impressive what you've established at Los at Los Angeles World Airports at LAX. You've established cleaning procedures based on science and evidence. Um, you've used risk assessments to guide the development of your procedures and your protocols, and and, and then you've actually you know 
to create this continuous improvement to, to, to make sure that what you think is getting done actually gets done. And I think all three airports here today, we've seen the visibility of cleaning for a purpose, cleaning for a reason, how important it is. And so I, I wanted to finish up with, with, with Rula. Um, she's our Director of Product Development at ISSA with GBAC. And, and talk about some of the, the tools and instruments that we have on showing the value of clean and also the measurement of cleaning. Yeah, thank you, Gavin. So um, I think uh, Scott, Celeste and Alma really kind of uh, put the kind of explain the importance of the value of clean. So I can ki kind of directly highlight where cleanliness meets profitability and kind of try to show the benefit of that. So uh, if we go back and look at the aviation value chain before the pandemic, we see that U.S. based airlines were top performers. However, with the pandemic, the aviation chain faced losses across most of its subsectors, as we all know. And in 2023, and I think Scott and Omar reflected that, uh, despite the significant surge in air travel and federal funding, a recent survey still shows that about 50% of uh, airports face financial uncertainties. Now, what does that mean? It means that we need to restore the customers that were lost during the pandemic. Uh, next. We need to restore safe and clean image of airports. So although cleaning has been traditionally viewed as a cost, even relatively modest investments in cleaning produce substantial financial returns. So if we think about it, a dirty facility with a poor image will definitely cost businesses direct revenue. It will create risks such as health hazards, slips and falls, it would lead to higher insurance and legal costs, and consumers would rather, actually there's a study that shows that 94% of consumers would rather do businesses with companies that have a clean facility and a positive image. So cleaning and good practices can lead to reduced operation costs, occupant wellness, building wellness, sustainability, and customer satisfaction. So if you look at all these elements, um, can you recognize the value of clean in your own rec uh, organization? Can you see the return of investment within all, the, well, all of these elements? Uh, so to help with that, ISSA has a valuable document or tool that you can download for free as a member, and the link is on, on the slide, uh, that has statistics and numbers that you can use to justify investment in additional cleaning protocol or cleaning staff. I will show only a few uh, examples due to time limitations, uh, but you can uh, send me an email or uh, uh, download the document. So if we look at uh, operational efficiency, the cost associated with poor quality, and we're talking here the cost of cleaning, uh, such as customer complaints, are far greater than the cost of implementing robust quality processes. So in other words, poor quality can actually decrease revenue. And it, studies have shown it can decrease revenue by 30%. So most surveys, and you can see the numbers on the slide, that track complaints, show complaints on cleanliness, and restrooms are really the top cause of customer complaints. So a quick search, um, I did a quick search to kind of see how many uh, toilets there are in airports. One of the big airports, Atlanta International Airport, has over 1,300 toilets. So we really need to keep these clean at all times. Otherwise, imagine having to do deal with all the complaints. Another element, occupant wellness. If we take absenteeism, that doesn't only generate direct costs to cover for replacement, but it also leads to reduction in productivity. For instance, in January 2022, just after the pandemic, 7.8 million workers missed work and 4.2 4 million workers that were, work, were supposed to work full time, worked part time. Again, imagine the time and money spent to make up for that. Um, so. It, more than 50% of facility managers have identified absenteeism as a significant concern, and this is increasing with time. It's also linked with mental health. It's linked with employee uh, turnover. We see that employees that are absent around 70 days have a 65% chance of leaving the company. Uh, similarly, if we look at presentism, presentism is when you go to work while you are sick. Uh, this costs around 150 billion to 250 billion, and that's in the US. If we lo look globally, this can cost around 7.8 trillion dollars. So there are many elements and examples to really justify the cost next on cleanliness. So clean uh, really makes money. 
Um, if we look at the health sector, I'm not going to go into the detail of the health because we just came out of the pandemic. And I think the airports uh, know more than the rest of the sectors the cost of the spread of germs. But I'll focus on safety. 85% of workers' compensation claims are attributed to slipping on slick floors. So uh, imagine how important it is to have a clean and properly clean uh, floor. Uh, the compensation cost for falls, slips, and trips, they exceed $70 billion annually. Improving air quality can lead to 10% in organizational prof profitability. And the list goes on. I'll use the last, uh, the the last, uh, the bit of time that I have left to introduce the last um, another tool by GPAC and ISSA, uh, and that's the process verification and auditing tool. Uh, you can download again this tool for free. Uh, there's the, the my email at the bottom and the link here. Uh, and the aim of this tool is basically uh, to help in measurement of cleanliness. This tool is instrumental for the GBAC Star accreditation. It covers tools such as uh, air monitoring tools, ATP meters, and other type of surface monitoring technologies. So at the end of the day, the most important thing is to work together for the passengers' health and safety. Thank you. No, thanks, Rul. That's fantastic. And I also wanted to add that you know we we had those tools like the um, the process for verification tool, you know, helping people measure clean and and understanding what gets done is done properly and appropriately. But also we have over 125 training courses um, at I have to say uh, that the, the, the GBAC anyone in the GBAC Star program we can help get access to again to build that 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 journey that pathway of education training. Uh, and continuous improvement. So let's open it up for questions. Uh, Gwen, over to you. Do we have any questions to answer, please? Okay, so what we'll do, just to summarize, I, I wanted to, to, to thank everyone. I want to thank uh, Scott um, from Minneapolis, St. Paul Airport, um, Celeste from Harry Reid International, Las Vegas Airport, Omar, uh, from Los Angeles World Airports. It's just been amazing that I've learned so much about airports, <laughs> but more importantly, that hopefully we've worked together as a team. We've helped each other. We're still going to help each other tomorrow. Uh, and that's important. And, and again, just the phenomenal numbers that you deal with on a daily basis, a yearly basis, both with passengers and employees. And it, it was really interesting that the federal government actually had a website that every day throughout the pandemic actually told us how many TSA officers were out sick, like as Ruler said, absenteeism. If we took that even further and we looked at the number of our employees, um, as Ruler outlined, both absent or present with maybe symptoms, even on a good day, say when we have the flu, for example, um, you know, those numbers are big. They're really they're big. And so we deal with cleaning. Um, for in, in airports at a whole different level. And I just wanted to say that all three of you have just been, you know, shining stars within the GBAC Star program. And I've just learned so much from all three of you. And I'm very grateful that we had this discussion today and I hope we continue to work together tomorrow. And I just think what, what you guys have done at your airports has been amazing. Um, and any, so anything else, anything else, uh, again, if anyone uh, wants to, 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 Find more information uh, about the GBAC Star program. Um, reach out to Scott, Celeste, and Omar. Um, you know, speak, speak you know, go to the front lines, talk to people, and ask them. You know what, 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 what was done? What could be done better? How did it help? But more important, you can also contact uh, uh, the American Association of Airport Executives. Uh, contact Gwen, uh, ask her questions, and also you can contact our GBAC um, Star team at ISSA. Uh, and again. You know, feel, feel, feel free to contact us. We're here to help. This is not about pass or failing. It's about continuous improvement. Over to you, Gwen. Thank you so much, Dr. Gavin. And thank you again to the GBAC team for participating and to all of our airport speakers. Um, we are really proud of the small role that AAAE has been able to play in per, you know, protecting our airports, protecting our staff and our passengers and making sure that you all have the resources you need to be safe and efficient. Um, we had three large airports participate today, but don't want to discourage anybody. This is a program for airports of all sizes, and absolutely all size airports have participated. Uh, we have a list of airports that ha are currently um, have current renewed 
their accreditation on our website. Um, you can go to the AAAE website and search GVAC to find more information. And as Gavin said, you can feel free to reach out to us as well. We really appreciate your time today um, and thanks for joining us.